I just can't get going. I say that the short weeks mm -hmm. are harder than the normal weeks. I agree with you. Because everything feels off. You don't know what day it is. You're more tired. You can't sleep as well. I agree. I think that a few things have happened. Yesterday, I was walking through a parking lot, and a man came walking by and said, what day is today? What did he just said? What day is today? He looked like a pretty. Did he, did he know you? No, he just uh, just was walking. He was asking everybody, "What day is today?" Oh. And we were all like, "It's Thursday." And uh, then getting away from him, you know. Do uh, you think he was like waiting for the apocalypse? Yeah, yeah, but he one didn't, of those types. But he didn't look, you like know, a loony. Like a loon. He just was saying, "What day is today? Is it like Tuesday?" Or and we all went, "No, it's Thursday, man." It's a Maybe Biggie's right. Maybe yeah. that short week. Well, I'm going to tell you, it's hard to judge a book by its cover when it comes to crazy now. Mm -hmm. um, I've learned this living in a downtown area. Yes. Um, sometimes you'll see somebody and you'll be like, ah, they don't look crazy. <laughs> and then you start talking to them and you're like, oh, you are crazy. Exactly. Like one lady went to pet my dog. Mm -hmm. And then she was like, do you know when Lucifer's coming? And I'm what? like, oh, okay. All right. Let's keep moving here. <laughs> sure. <laughs> you know, exactly. That it, kind of thing. It was like me when I met that homeless man in Atlanta. I told you that. And, he, and you bought him breakfast? Yes. Event, yada, yada, yada. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I kept chatting with him. He's like, hey, man. And I didn't know. I was down with a friend. We were doing Super Bowl coverage. Mm, so that was you? That was me. <laughs> it was Super Bowl 28, I believe. Cowboys Bills in Atlanta. I was sent. I was doing some sports then. Mm -hmm. And we were covering the Super Bowl on the streets. And a guy walked up to me with a backpack on and just started chatting. I thought he was the nicest guy. And when you say covering the Super Bowl, you never got in the game, correct? No. <laughs> Yeah. You're just outside talking to fans not who also didn't get in the game. No, uh, we were back by the day of. I mean, we had not. It, we just, oh, uh, okay. we were on street. I'm going to head home and watch this. <laughs> just walking up to people. <laughs> hey, what day is it? <laughs> <laughs> That's sort of. Mm -hmm. And he came up to me and said, you know, just kept chatting. Hey, who do you think is going to win the big game and this and that? And I was walking into a McDonald's and uh, he just came on with me and I just, I loved it. You know, I had such a sense of community. Like I'm an outsider, but they're welcoming me in and I get up there and uh, order my breakfast for my friend and me. And he says, Hey man, buy me breakfast to, to me. And I said, well, yeah. And that's when I realized, Oh, wait, wait a, minute. a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> I've been taken. Yeah. And when I was young, you know, 30, yeah. 30. <laughs> and I said, okay, whatever you'd like. And he ordered half the menu. You know, it was like hotcakes, sausage, egg McMuffin, all of it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it made them a bill $25 higher. And when I got back to my friend, he said, you are such a rude man. You are such a small town <laughs> simp. Just got taken. Guy was homeless mm -hmm. from, from day one. You should have known he was going to take you in. And for whatever reason, I come in here today, not... Like you just said, uh, maybe it's because of the short week. It, it is. I, I, all of us, I feel like, are off. I'm unprepared. You no, just don't I'm, know what day it is. I'm unprepared. I don't. Uh, another example. We have a dear friend in this business, okay? He works nights at our sister station. And occasionally, he is here in the building when Chris Dim gets here or I get here. Now, we get here, you know, 4 o'clock in the morning. Chris Dim is 3.45 a.m., okay? And he's occasionally here, like, he gets off at midnight, but he'll work even. Even that, it's like... Well, sometimes he has outside things, like yes. club nights. Baseball game nights. Baseball mm -hmm. games, exactly. And a lot of times that's on Thursday night. So when I pulled in the parking lot, his car was here. And I thought, oh man, he's again burning the midnight oil. Because he's off at midnight, but now it's 4 a.m. and mm -hmm. he's still here. So I thought I'd... And this happens, what, three or four times a year he's in Correct. here. Correct. And so I thought, well, I'm going to chat with him today. So I came walking in, and Chris Dim says... Have you seen him? And I said, no, I saw his car. He's like, well, he's in it. I said, what do you mean? <laughs> he's just sitting in it. I said, because what do you mean? like, like you, Kelly, I had assumed that he was downstairs That's right. in his office, you know, doing some work. That's right. You know, that, trying to catch up because he was out late or you know, working ahead. Who knows? Right. I didn't even but look. He wasn't. I didn't look his way because I just assumed it was his car. But Chris, I said, so he's not in the building. He said, no, he's sitting. In the, I looked. Right. He's sitting in the driver's seat of his car. A darkened car that's with the ignition off. That's right. For At 4 a.m. Uh, okay. And so there wasn't a young lady's head in his lap. No, was no he's no, just he sitting lying. there. And I, oh, well, duck, 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 from duck. the office, I pressed my face against the window. Chris Tim said, don't make it obvious. And I was staring <laughs> at him. At least turn the light out. I mean. <laughs> And I was like, what is he doing there? And he sat literally another 40 minutes. Then another coworker comes in and she chatted with him. She saw him and he rolled the window down. And do you know what he said to her? What am I doing here? <laughs> I was about to ask the same. 
<laughs> you know, it's it's the really the only question. Yeah. Sat in his car for probably 45 minutes to an hour, just sat there in our parking lot as mm-hmm. people who were coming into work were streaming by huh. the early morning folks mm-hmm. were streaming by. It's With the, one thought on his mind. What, what am, am I doing, doing why here? Am I, why am I here? Why don't I turn the ignition and leave? Why don't I go home? And go home. <laughs> it's very strange. Pandemic got the best of him now. He, uh, yeah. He's he he was yeah. He's a great guy. I love him. We talk football a lot. But it took his toll. But the <laughs> uh, he was at home for a long, long time during the pandemic. I mean, isolated. And I think that's really taken its toll on him. <laughs> I mean, this is a. An example, don't yeah. you think? Of this guy that we know and I've been friends with for 15 years is sitting alone at 4 a.m. in a car in his parking lot saying, what am I doing here? <laughs> and he's just sitting. That's, That's not a symptom of <laughs> the Delta variant, is it? The Delta? Are you talking about the Delta variant? Of course I'm talking about Delta, you twerp! <laughs> Is that is the Delta? Is, that, is it the first I, time I we're seeing it? <laughs> is that a sign that so, he's got the Delta? They're talking about now Pfizer having to give you a booster shot because they're seeing now some waning results in their original vaccine. Pfizer only to the Delta or to to the Delta. Of yeah. course, I'm talking about Delta. You. Did you not get it the first time? Sorry. Yes. Yeah, to the Delta. The Delta has caused the I problem. was uh, doing some reading on that last night, and I have basically they're saying it's a little bit overblown. Oh, it's good. one study out uh-huh. of, like, Israel, and it's um, it's basically it's still working as far as not having anyone go to the hospital. Mm-hmm. The symptoms are just a little worse. But it's still, like, 99% no one goes to the hospital. Well, that's good news. And it's one study. Right. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. there's so many studies with mm-hmm. so much. Yeah, I mean, that, but, that's mm-hmm. how science works. That's how research works. But see, this is what I do like, and I think this is good. Because of this one study, though, mm-hmm. Pfizer has basically asked, again, can we go ahead and start making a re-up? Uh, uh, for the Delta. Yes. yes. For, so that for our booster shot. Mm-hmm. So that way, you know, what if the study is right and we have more of these studies saying it's dropping, then, hey, we've got the booster ready to go come Christmas time. And I... I hate that I feel this way, but when I saw, and I'm glad you said it's only one study, but this, when I saw oh, Pfizer reporting a little bit of shakiness with their vaccine, I thought to myself, I'm a Moderna man. I, I did too. As, Everyone does, I think. Yeah. Well, there were, I think in this room we are. Mm. Although, was David Mix? Dave's da- Pfizer man. Yeah. Okay. He's Pfizer. And, we're and, Moderna, but, though. Yeah, but there was other people in this building who were kind of strutting around and going, oh, you got Moderna. Well, I know. You know. Mm-hmm. Now. That was now my safety. Yeah, worm, <laughs> Worm's turn. That was my safety vaccine. I'm mm-hmm. a Pfizer. Uh, Littlest Patriot came up to me and said, he was oh, yeah. oh, he's like, oh, it's all Pfizer. Pfizer's, mm-hmm. the, Pfizer's best. the best. And then I'd say, how do you know that? And he'd always go, my father's a pharmacist. <laughs> Quietly, I, mean, okay. can count. I think quietly <laughs> Moderna has moved to the lead. Oh, it has. I, did, I do. Just I think it's holding up better than uh, in a few studies. I agree. But I think... how does Moderna perform against the Delta? <sighs> of course I'm talking about Delta, you twerp. This is the one. <laughs> right now it's showing 99% still. Thank you, baby. <laughs> Yes, that's Delta too, baby. Mm-hmm. Bring it. Bring your Delta in here, and Moderna will turn it away. And they're saying if we do need boosters, though, they're saying you can mix it up now. Yeah, like if you, yeah. yeah, like yeah. if you got the Johnson and Johnson one shot, no big deal. You can get the Moderna booster. Oh, it's all about at this point. It's just about keeping everybody yeah away from the Deltas. You, exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> The Delta Delta is the most dangerous. I love that Delta thing, I'll tell you that. And I am so into this. I read every day uh, how many people in our state are getting the vaccine and what the numbers are. And I have noticed. Now, we wanted to get below 5% of positive rate, and we got it down to like 1%, and now it's creeping back up. The other day I saw it was 4.9%. So it's it's still okay, but I'm thinking to myself, uh uh-oh, is this, are we going to have to, there, there, some states are already talking like if we don't get better, then they're going to have to, I mean, Missouri, yeah, Missouri, they're blaming Branson. Come on, Branson. Branson. Come on, Branson. They're saying that the problem is, Mm -hmm. and they said that side of Missouri where Branson is, is way worse than the rest of the state. Mm. Really? And they're blaming Branson because Branson is wide open. And everybody comes together. Mm -hmm. And some of them are not vaccinated. They go back to where they were. Exactly. Do you know what I saw today? This is fascinating to me. And it it just dovetails right into what you just said. Uh, It is a list of the best amusement parks in America. They, they they listed the top 10 amusement parks in America. Who's the uh, the source? How did we rank them? This was ranked this was uh, a survey done of 50,000 Americans. Okay, so people okay. just average Americans. Average people that have been to 
all of these amusement parks, and there are many of them, and they ask which is the best amusement park. And they also uh, did a study of, as far as affordability, what it offers when you get there, oh, okay. all I like those that. types of things. And I just saw it, and I was stunned at the number one. Number two, what reminded me of number two is called uh, Silver Dollar City in Branson, Missouri. Okay. It was number two, okay? Is that a full-fledged park, like with rides? I never, heard, I never heard of that. I've never heard of it's it It's called never, an amusement park. Never, I, I would bet they have, at this point, they have to have rides. Yeah. yeah, I think so, too. Guess what number one is? Number one, and I've been there. I would assume it's Disney. It's number nine. Disney was number nine. Mm. Affordability part, maybe? Probably. I just read that Disney is pricing people out. And uh, I'm going back and forth with our P1 Disney Ryan. And you know those fast passes that mm-hmm. I have been, my wife and I have really taken advantage of the fast pass technology. Now in, in Euro Disney, they're charging for that. Disneyland Paris, it's $10 per person to fast pass it per ride. So if my, me and my family wanted to ride something, that's forty dollars to get to the you know to get that mm. fast pass. Well, it used to be free. Yeah, you, know, you used to be able to just sign. Yeah, in. exactly. So that is that's a lot to ask for every single ride, ride? for yeah. a family forty dollars. So uh, they are at number nine, Walt Disney World in Orlando. Number one, Sea World Orlando. Number huh. one, they've come all the way back. Wow. Yes, I'm really not surprised by that. You're not. No, because I feel like. They had to get people back. Mm-hmm. So affordability ride wise, I bet you get it's good. It's a great deal, and you you've been there post all the bad press. I did, and you said it was phenomenal. You had a great time, and there's so many ride. It's all rides. It is. There's still some uh, some education, some education, some, and some shows, exploitation, but mostly mostly it's rides. It is. They they have shows with the whales and everything. We saw all that. I was there Fourth of July two years ago, and I was blown away by the rides. The roller coasters are incredible and uh they've they've really done a nice job doing that and it's also easily easy to get around uh, walt disney world of course is so huge but sea world is one park you can go right to the roller coaster and their fast pass the way they did it was you paid extra it was like 40 or 50 dollars extra for your ticket but you could go fast pass as much as you want so you really uh, avoided the lines what you don't know is that each time for each dollar you spend on a fast pass they club a baby seal to death <laughs> Am it's, I, it's in very small print on the back. Now, and most I, people don't read that. Okay, stuff. was I okay with that? <laughs> I I can't say I'm okay with that. That's that's that doesn't seem right. That has to be in the smallest print possible. Yeah. But a lot of these on this list, and here's another number five, Dollywood. And I have heard mm. nothing but great things about Dollywood. What about what about the uh, the Six Flags? I mean, are they consistently uh, up, consistently down? Because that's they're kind of the same, right? Like the Bush Gardens yeah. or a couple of those. Bush Gardens, Williamsburg is number four. Here's the top five. Sea Sea World is number one. Silver Dollar City in Branson, Missouri is number two. Mm. Kings Island in Mason, Ohio is number three. I think I've, I've heard, heard great that. things yeah. about it, but yeah. that's not. Is that the one with? San, is that's, that the that's one Cedar. With all, that's Cedar Point. Cedar Point. That's number okay. seven. Cedar okay. Point is number seven. So Ohio has a bunch of good amusement parks, according to this, anyway. Uh, four is Bush Gardens, Williamsburg. Five is Dollywood. People tell me Dollywood is so affordable and has great rides, and their hospitality is amazing. And yeah, I really want to go. I do too. I've never been, but <gasps> we should go together. Do you think? Oh my God! <laughs> I'll get you a rascal. See, this, <laughs> this is never mind. I'm going alone. <laughs> it, let me tell you something. I'll I want you there by me in that rascal, and when somebody says something about it, let them say let, it. Near make me. sure you're recording. Let them say it near me, <laughs> and make, I'll take. You know them. what? Hold your phone up the whole time. <laughs> I'll take them on. Jeff in Virginia, you're talking about SeaWorld. Go ahead. Yep. Disney had raised their prices. We've been going for years. But uh, they raised their prices up so high about a year and a half ago. And we switched over. and We could get tickets to Universal and uh, SeaWorld for the you know season passes for less, both parts, for the year, less than Disney. Wow. 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 Well, that's, that's exactly – the article I read said that their price is now – and it, it well, Disney will tell you you're paying for the whole Disney. Well, it's true. I mean, you get an experience. It's magical. It really is. But Walt Disney's idea was to have a park where everybody could come and every family could share in this great joy. And they have priced out half of America now. They say. But do you love? Do you like it as much, Jeff, going to those parks over Disney? Actually, I do. The, there's more adult rides, more activity. Mm-hmm. Uh, I enjoy it myself more being a grown up. Yeah. Than the the Disney itself. Even though Disney is great for the children. It's true. 
You know, I had this conversation with my wife last night because we're talking about a Disney trip in the future. And you know I'm... You know what I am for Disney. You know how I have been. Deep down under, the, under your hair, there's mouse ears. I mean, I'm a Disney person. I have loved our trips to Disney. But I had read that article about them pricing out, and I said to my wife, let's just talk about the things we love at Disney. And there's about 10 rides, okay. which we really, really like, throughout the, all four parks. You can walk throughout the park basically buzzed. You can. Well, your wife does. You can. I mean, you can sneak a little water. Oh, yeah, you can. Or Mickey juice or whatever. Yeah, okay. But I said, you know, it's so expensive, and we've never seen Universal Studios. We've only been to SeaWorld that one day. What Jeff's saying to me makes a lot of sense. Plus, my kids are older now, and we want I want the adult ride, the bigger rides. And at Disney, there's not that many, and with a price. Now, my wife fought back. She pushed back hard on that. Did she? Well, and she said the magic. You know, the D- Disney has the magic. Thank you very much, Jeff. Appreciate it. You don't think they're trying to raise the prices to decrease the crowds? I mean, I, I mean, guess it's going to happen inevitably. It is possible. And they say, because I'm sure that's the biggest complaint, right? This charging for the fast pass, they're talking about uh, that's a way to keep lines not so close together. You know, they're, they're not uh, so, socially distant. Yeah. But I don't but buy that. Disney, I, I mean, don't buy on. that. Yeah. If you're, if you're there at Disney, you know you're around a lot of other what people. What do you think would make, looking at a survey like this, what do you think would make someone say, I had a bad experience at a park? Hmm. Well, if if it's so expensive and you don't have a great time, and I, you know, and even Disney, it's so hot, it's so crowded, it is expensive. But but you always leave going. I know. What a magical time. I know. Mm-hmm. I did have a. I do have yeah. a magical. I mean, time. you can be on the last day. You're chafing. Yeah. You're just hot. I mean, you're, you're miserable. You burn. You spent probably at least six thousand dollars. Yes. And you still leave going. I wish we could stay another day. Uh, well, yeah. true. They do that to you. I had a, a bad experience at a park. To me, like if I'm going for one day to one of these parks. And one of the rides is down. That ah. that would really tick me off, mm-hmm. you know, because you do, it's a plan. Yeah. You have to go mm-hmm. to it. Yeah. If I went to Dollywood and the main roller coaster was down the three days I was there, I'd be upset. I, I never I, thought about you know growing up in Richmond, Virginia. King's Dominion was twenty minutes up the road, and Bush Gardens Williamsburg was mm-hmm. an hour down the road. Both nice, both very. And you could good do parks. you know we would do that. They they would have when I was you know my teens and early twenties. They had six p.m. fares. The, they would drop the price at six, and the park would stay open until eleven. Mm-hmm. I like it. So we, you know, we drive down there at five o'clock. Yeah, and and then ride everything till eleven o'clock, and drive back home, be in our own beds. That's nice. I like that. That's it's a good, really, plan. really awesome. close enough. You know, it would have been on that list thirty years ago. What? The Myrtle Beach Pavilion. Oh, you're right. The pavilion Biggie's was very, right. very nice. Loved the pavilion. I liked the pavilion a lot too. Oh, I loved it as a kid. That was what's a, at the bottom of the list. The, How far does it go down? Just ten. ten. Oh. These are the top ten. The bot. The next five. So th- th- these are no losers. No. Sea World, Silver Dollar City, Kings Island, Bush Gardens, Williamsburg, Dollywood. The bottom five here, six through ten. Bush Gardens, Tampa, which I hear good things. I mean, My family awesome. does love that place. Do they? That down there, yeah. Uh, Cedar Point in uh, Sandusky, Ohio. Apparently that's the ride yeah. capital. The roller coasters yeah. are right there. Hershey Park in Hershey, Pennsylvania. I was great things. Mm-hmm. I went as a boy. <coughs> did you? Mm-hmm. We toured the plant. Did you? Mm-hmm. They have a little ride. Well, they Someone did have a ride. Never left. <laughs> <laughs> Mentally, no. <laughs> little Augustus Gloop. <laughs> I saw how the Reese's cups were made. I had a. I got a bright orange Reese's hat that I had for years. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was a great trip. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds pretty nice. How were the rides? Uh, fun rides, yeah. <laughs> chocolatey. They have rides, uh, or uh, Walt Disney World is number nine, and then Knott's Berry Farm in California. Huh. I've heard about that too. I've been to that. About it. You've been to that. Also. I have been to that one. What and, candy do they make? Um, <laughs> seriously, it's Knott's. Yeah, yeah, right. It's, it's uh, yeah. get your jellies. Yeah. Um, but uh, it was okay. Mm-hmm. I don't remember it sticking out as anything yeah. special, but I think out there. It's a big deal because of the tradition of it out there. It's like, oh, it's Knott's Berry Farm. I see. Yeah. Is well, it big? Yeah, it's. A, I mean, it's a good size amusement well, park. Yeah. I I'm going to try to get my wife to take the whole clan to Dollywood because we're it's it's drivable. Say goodbye to Disney. Yeah. I think you. Hello, moved Dolly. To, <laughs> yeah. Hello, I bet Dolly. you have a great time. I bet she'd love it. I do too. I think she'd love Pigeon Forge, Gatlinburg area. I think she'd love the whole thing. They say it's just a wonderful place mm-hmm. with really friendly folks. And it's affordable and great rides. I think she would love it. And that's what we're looking for, isn't it? I think maybe next year I'll try to get us to over to Dollywood. Mm. Oh, this list is, you know, there's a lot to take in there of the uh, best amusement parks there are. And that's 
That's where I am. That's where my mind is today. That's why I'm unprepared. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, you said we started bad. I think this is solid. Oh, thanks. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I think it's a real solid start.